Hey folks, it's Saman once again. Uh, welcome back to another review. This is a review thanks to Lane618 Cody, who sent me this film, Them. Film from the 50s. 1954, I believe is when it came out. And it's a film that stars James Whitmore, who I remember he was in uh, the film The Relic. He was the guy in the old guy in the wheelchair in the relic. Uh, other people, you have a guy named Edmund Gwynn, James Arness, who was the monster in the thing from another world. Uh, you also had the guy who was, I forget what his name was. He was a guy who would be uh, Davy Crockett for Disney. And Right off the bat, I want to say I liked this movie, them. I liked this film. I thought this film was pretty well done. And, I mean, it's not like I'm a, the most biggest fan of 50s movies, but I thought this was actually pretty well done. Fess Parker, that's the guy who was Davy Trotty on the Disney. Uh, pretty much, pretty basic story. I... What was interesting about them, how it started off, it didn't take too long for it to get going. 90 some minute movie, but I, I felt it went faster than The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. And pretty much what happens is, uh, I like the beginning of the film is a little bit of a sort of a mystery. Because these cops find these weird things, for example they find this little girl who doesn't talk, who for some reason is mute. They find uh, this person dead and it looks like there's sugar that's been, looks like the house was destroyed from the inside and uh, there's these little things of sugar around the place. Same with this house and it's them sort of, these two cops, one of them James Whitmore, investigating, wondering what's going on. And then they find these sort of uh, prints in the sand, and they wonder what's going on. They bring in this guy. One of them is an FBI guy, who I believe is the James Arness character, it's the FBI guy. And uh, there's a certain uh, smell that this one older doctor gives the little girl, and it snaps her out. And it's like, oh my God, it's them. Yeah, it's them. Hence the title, them, from the little girl. I thought I moved at a quick pace, pretty much. Long story short, the older scientist, the uh, one of the cops, just his partner, gets killed early on. Uh, the FBI guy and this woman, they go off in the desert and they find these 12 feet long, 12 foot long ants. <clears throat> and what's nice is that there's more than one, and the reason I say that is because you, that he actually kills some. <laughs> Uh, whether they find sort of where the hole that they've dug in, sort of their base, and they're shooting bazookas at the hole. They go in, find that some of the, the queen ants are gone, but there's some flamethrower action, so they can flamethrow the whole fucking place. I thought the look of the creatures were good enough. I mean, this is a film from 1954. I think it looked fine enough. A lot of practical stuff. Mostly practical stuff. Uh, you know, people having guns and machine guns to shoot in the ants' faces. That's always nice. Uh, that guy, Fess Parker, I thought he was nice. He was a, like a Texan who is locked up thinking he's crazy. Because I saw these flying saucers, but they look like a, a flying ant. And he's really telling the truth. And apparently there was something that, uh, maybe it was Davy Crockett, I don't know. But I guess Walt Disney was looking at this and they wanted... Him to look at James Arness, and he actually said, "Hey, I like that guy, that that Texan guy." Which I'll be honest, it would have been nice to have him as the lead. I mean, James Arness was all right as the FBI guy, but it would have been nice to see that you know guy was Davy Crockett to have him be the lead. I probably would have liked it. I I liked the film. I thought them was pretty good. I would. James Arness was okay, but he was a little bit dry. Nice. Some, uh, again, I thought it had a nice, uh, quick pace to it. Um, little moments like, oh shit, for example, 
there's a moment where they see the ants and there's, there's this pile of bones and one of the ants has this gigantic not gigantic but it has this rib cage it has his rib cage on it oh cool you know for a 50s film for an ant to be just wilding around a, a, a damn rib cage for a 50s film I think that's pretty ballsy uh, Leonard Nimoy has a almost a cameo in this uh, very young Leonard Nimoy. I, I think it's like an Air Force base, and a guy, he gets like a a text, like a note about how this is before the our main characters go to see the the Texan guy, and pretty much a transition scene. It's like, oh shit, that's Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. You know, you see these older films, you catch some of these guys like Lee Van Cleef at the end of Beast from Twenty Thousand Fathoms, or Leonard Nimoy, or hey, that's a guy who would be Davy Crockett. Uh, I thought I wanted a pretty decent pace, and then pretty much one queen ant, there's like two queen ants that left, that flew away, one, I just landed on this uh, ship, and he has uh, quite a few of decent uh, action bits with the ants, them attacking the ship, and uh, granted, they don't go hog wild in the city like that but also it's nice that this is one of those early films where the ending takes place in the sewers because there's a lot of monster movies that I enjoy that takes place in the sewers I mean hell you got like Mimic and even films like Watchers 2 and and Alligator and Chud but this is one of those early films that I could think of that you know their finale takes place in the sewer you monsters in the sewer of a of a Big city, this one being, I think, uh, Los Angeles. And they talk to this guy who people think he's crazy or drunk, and he talks about how he's seen these ants go in the sort of the waterway. Uh, not really the waterway, but pretty much going that goes into the tunnels, and there's some kids missing in there. And uh, the guy who's the top billing, James Whitmore, that was kind of surprising to see, he actually gets killed. You know, the, the cop who's in plain, uh, not plain clothes, but he's in a, you know, officer uniform. Now, granted, he saves the kids, but he gets killed in it. But as I see, I mean, you see the soldiers going in, they flamethrow some, you know, f burn some of the ants, or they shoot them with machine guns, and, you know, there's bits throughout, they shoot them in the antenna, shooting the antennas off, or and so on and so forth. That was, you know, some fun, decent bits of action. I thought the ant, you know, creature effects were pretty well done for a 50s film. The acting was fine. Uh, and then the, the FBI guy, James Arnes, sort of goes in to play and they find the nest and they take care of it. And I know uh, Lane 618 was sending me this mentioned about how the last line of dialogue about how, you know, atomic bombs have been going off for so long, who knows what else. We're entering a new dawn, a new age. Who knows what else could come about. And of course, around this time, you had Godzilla. So, he mentioned about the last bit of dialogue. I do agree with that. And they take care of the nest. I thought the production value was pretty decent. I like that the beginning of the film it has a certain mystery element that... Uh, like right off the bat, there it doesn't really waste a lot of time getting into it. I thought the cast did a pretty decent job. I thought uh, I'm sorry, it's just hard to review some of these older films. Just like how much can you say about it? I mean, usually if it's a film that I didn't like or I didn't care for, I kind of get more like angry or violent or you know talking nitpicking about it but then was a film I enjoyed this them is a film that I liked I liked for what it was it didn't bore me uh, I really don't have much problems with it I thought the acting was pretty decent I thought the effects were pretty decent I liked that they were able to kick some big ant ass A little bit more of a serious film considering the subject matter, which I actually appreciate in this instance.
No sequel bait ending, no downbeat ending. I thought more stuff happened in this film. Which real enough, like Beats of Twenty Thousand Fathoms is about thirteen minutes shorter, but I thought them went at a better pace. It, it just seemed like more stuff was happening. It seemed like there was more something happening. Beats for Twenty Thousand Fathoms is like nothing happened here. I, I got maybe because some of the actors is like, oh cool, there's Leonard Nimoy cameo. Oh cool, there's the guy who's David Crockett. And even the lead is like, oh that's the uh, the guy who's the Monster and theme from another world, and the other is that guy in the relic. Maybe something as superficial as that, but I liked them. I liked it for what it was. I mean, it's it's not gonna be much of a review because I don't know. It's it's hard for me to do reviews where it's just like I like the film, and not much more I can say about it than that. Just sort of me giving my thoughts on it. Be the way I, I'm just gonna be repeating myself. Uh, I liked it. I thought then was a pretty good film. So thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you later.